friends, and thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be studying a subject that I think is very important for every Christian to understand what the Word of God teaches about it. And that's the subject of the law, specifically the law of Moses. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of a necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. Now what's interesting here is it says, Jesus can't be our high priest under the old covenant law. He came from the tribe of Judah, and only the Levites could be priests under the old covenant. So in order for Jesus to be our high priest, there had to be a changing of the law. Then it goes on down and it says, the law has been disannulled. And that word disannulled means canceled because it was weak and unprofitable. And we have to grasp that and really take that to heart and understand what that means for the law to be canceled. It has no more bearing on us. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. Now, the law has dominion over everybody until they die. The only way out of the law is death. And right before this, it's comparing being joined to the law like being joined in marriage. And how in order for the wife to be freed from her marriage to her husband, he has to die so that she can marry somebody else. And if she marries somebody else, it's adultery if her husband is still living. If we would be joined to Jesus and still be under the old covenant law, it would be spiritual adultery. Jesus has made it possible for us to die to the law through his death. Therefore, we can, be, we can die to the law and be free to live for him and under his commandments. Unless we die to the law, we cannot be part of the church, which is the bride of Christ. So we have to die to that law. And if we are dead to the law, it no longer has any jurisdiction over us. It has no ruling over us. So we're dead. Just think about, I mean, dead. Now, one thing that people ask is about the Ten Commandments. And, you know, are we still to keep the Ten Commandments? Because they're part of the law. Or are they? And some people would say, no, they're not. They're something special. But that's actually settled in this passage because in verse 7 it says, I had not known sin but by the law, for I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Now the only place that the law ever said, Thou shalt not covet, was in the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments are specifically included in the law. We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, 
even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Now, do you get that last phrase? If righteousness could come through the law, if we could be righteous by keeping the law, then Jesus coming and dying on the cross was an absolute waste. It was completely vain and worthless. It is impossible to be righteous by keeping the law. No one will ever get to heaven by keeping the law. Now, if I go back to the law and bring it to life again, I will become a transgressor. You see, I can't keep the old covenant and Jesus' commands at the same time. It is impossible. You cannot keep both Christ's commands and the old covenant. They are at odds with each other. Just like we talked about at the beginning, Jesus can't be our priest as long as we're under the old covenant because he's, he's not allowed to be priest. And one final note, Jews are dead to the law as well. There is no difference between the Jews and the Gentiles in this question of being dead to the law because it says here at the beginning, we who are Jews by nature, not sinners of the Gentiles, we have believed in Jesus Christ for, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. So there's no difference between the Jews and the Gentiles and that's spelled out even more clearly in other passages of scripture that we won't get into right now. And then, in Galatians 5.1, here's what Jesus says, and this is, in the command, this is in the context of the law. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Jesus commands us to stand fast in his liberty and not get tangled up with the old law. The old law, the law of Moses, is bondage and we can't get tangled up with it. When we go back to the law and require ourselves or others or both to obey certain commands out of the old law, we disobey Jesus in this verse. So right here you have a passage that confirms what we just read two passages ago in Galatians where it said that if I build again the old law, I make myself a transgressor. This is one of the things that you're going to transgress. This is the command right here. We can't keep both the old law and this command because we won't be standing fast in liberty. What we need to do now is what it says in what Jesus told us in John 14. If ye love me, keep my commandments. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. We need to keep Jesus' commands. It is important. If we do not obey Jesus, it shows that we don't really love him. Jesus did not free us from all law. He freed us from the law, the law of Moses. Now, I encourage you to study the word for yourself on all this. Don't take my word for it. I've just given you a, a brief overview of this. Practically throughout the whole New Testament, you will find proof of this, that we're no longer under the law. Once you start looking for it, it is amazing what you will find. I encourage you to evaluate your life, whether you are holding on to things that are based solely upon Old Covenant laws. Stand on this word, the word of God, and join me as a radical for Jesus.